grace, mercy, and peace to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The lesson for our meditation this morning is the gospel lesson read a moment ago from Luke chapter 21. And our sermon theme today is entitled, He's Coming. <clears throat> Dear friends and beloved brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, we all have a common thread, and that is the fact that life can be really challenging sometimes. Everybody has trials and struggles and problems and fears that they have to deal with. And for the Christian, it gets a little more complicated yet, because... As a Christian, we look around the world that we live in today and even throughout all of history past, and you see things in society that kind of dishonors God or His purposes. It rejects and diminishes God. And sometimes, if we're honest with ourselves, when we look at our own lives, we see things that should not be there, and we struggle against those things too. Sometimes it feels like it would just be easier to throw your hands up in the air in submission and deal with life's challenges by just withdrawing and playing it safe with the world and taking the path of least resistance instead of actually walking the difficult walk of a Christian life. Well, the text today in Luke 21 addresses this challenge because it points us towards a not-so-pleasant topic to think about, which is the end of the world as we know it. Jesus' words in the text today has both warnings and promises. And they were directed both to his disciples of that day and to you and I. Jesus was telling his disciples back then that life is going to be hard really, really hard in the coming years. Well, sure enough, about 40 years after this text, Jesus' prediction of judgment against Jerusalem came true. Because the religious leaders that had rejected him all of these years were punished as the Roman military came in and invaded Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, and virtually demolished the whole city. Jesus' words today that we hear, though seemingly filled with nothing but wrath and anger, actually are a tremendous blessing to us because he invites us to look past all of the trouble and all of the sorrow and all of the pain and all of the evil in the world towards the day when he's going to come back and he's going to judge the living and the dead. And at that time, he is going to remove all sin from all lives, and he's going to make everything new and right again. Now, because it is Jesus who says these things today, you can be completely confident that God is going to rescue and redeem all of his children in Christ, because Jesus is God and everything he says comes to pass. So Jesus is your Lord, and Jesus is coming. Now one fact of truth that seems to get lost when we start to worry and stress over all of the problems and trials we have is that no matter how bad things might get, a rebellious world cannot stop the will and the plan of God. You saw that in the very life of Jesus. When Jesus was here, it sure looked like his story was moving towards a really bad ending. But the world's anticipated victory over Jesus ended up being shattered. Jesus was the true king of Israel. He was the long-promised savior throughout the Old Testament. He was God in flesh. And he came to Jerusalem back to the world that he created. And everyone lined up to oppose him and to rebel against him. The chief priests and the scribes and the Sadducees 
and the Pharisees and the Roman authorities <coughs> and the unbelieving public all plotted against Jesus. They used lies, they used deceit, they used whatever means it took to stop him, and they didn't rest until he was beaten and bloodied and nailed to a cross. It looked like they had won. After all, dead people usually stay dead. But not Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead, and as he did, he defeated Satan's sin and the power of death. Jesus lives forever, and that means that his promises also live forever. And that fact has unbelievable implications for you and for me today. You see, your sin and my sin <clears throat> has the power to take our lives towards a really, really bad end. But just like sin's victory over Jesus was broken... Sin's victory over you has also been conquered by Jesus. By nature, you and I are part of the unbelieving, rebellious world. We see our sinful nature rear its ugly head from time to time. Sometimes we can get greedy. Sometimes we pretend that we are the Lord over our things. We act like we have the final say in matters of life. Sometimes we might withhold forgiveness from somebody or love from somebody. We might be judgmental against somebody when we're angry. The sinful nature inside all of us actually wants to be God and wants to be the boss. That sin would have brought us down to death. But Jesus went down into eternal death for your sin and for my sin, and he won. Jesus rose, defeating death and shattering the power of our sin. So now you have nothing to be afraid of. He is in control, and you belong to him. You've been set free from sin and death by Jesus, and Jesus is coming. And it works the same way for the world. In the text, Jesus gave us warnings about the hardships and the problems we're going to face in life. He said the temple was going to be destroyed. He said false prophets would come and try to deceive people. He said there would be wars and earthquakes and food shortages. And we would experience personal persecutions. He told us... There would be strife and problems within our relationships, sometimes even within families. And he said the world is going to hate you because of him. All of this has proven to be true. It seems as if the world sometimes is just careening straight out of control. Corruption appears to be everywhere. Economic problems never seem to stop. Crime and war unnerve us. The morality of society erodes year by year by year, and all of this can be really, really scary. But in the middle of all of the chaos, God gives us his word. Jesus' words today give us hope, give us strength, give us perspective. In the face of trials and problems, Jesus says in verses 14 and 15, Settle it therefore in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. He empowers us every second of our lives. <laughs> Listen to the encouragement he gives in verses 18 and 19. Not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your eternal life. Jesus is the source of strength for every single hardship and problem that you will endure this side of heaven. And Jesus is your source of eternal life after this life is over. 
You are baptized into him. Heaven is yours because of him, and he is trustworthy to be of help to you in your life today. God promises that every detail of life happens according to his plan. And his plan is to bring the world toward the final goal, like he said in verse 27. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. <clears throat> On the last day, the whole world will see Jesus and there will be no mistaking who is Lord. Yes, Jesus is coming. Now, a good question after hearing the scary things Jesus said is, what can we as Christians expect when Jesus returns? What if he comes back this afternoon? After all, that text sounded kind of fearful. But for you, a child of God, the last day is not anything to be afraid of, but it's a day to look forward to with confidence. That day is drawing near. Jesus is indeed coming, and God is in complete control of everything, including the end. In the first century in Jesus' day, <clears throat> the Jewish leadership of the temple, they thought they were in charge. They thought they could stop Jesus. They thought they could reject Jesus and remain in power over God's people. But the Romans took them away. They faced a mini judgment day of sorts because of their rebellion against Jesus. Then the Romans probably felt like they were the ones who were in charge of calling the shots. But as you know, the Roman Empire has been gone for a really, really long time. While God remains in charge of history, running the show towards the future and beyond. Now this is really good news for you because every time you hear about a war or a natural disaster or more financial calamity or anything that the world is going to offer up to try and scare you, just remember that this troubled world is moving towards a goal. And it is in the complete control of God and God has a plan. And His plan is for His Son to return in glory and make right what has gone so terribly wrong. So now, you can reread that passage again and see that you can actually look trouble and fear right in the eye and not be afraid. Jesus Christ, Almighty God in flesh, King of kings and your Lord and personal Savior, promises that not a hair on your head will perish. In verse 28, Jesus says that when he comes in glory, we are to straighten up and raise your head because your redemption is drawing near. We deserve the opposite. We deserve to hang our heads in shame and fear, but you are God's own child, and he loves you very dearly. He has saved you. He has given you everlasting life. <clears throat> you are in Christ, so you are forgiven. So you can raise your head and look forward to the future's uncertainties. You can even look forward to the last day with complete joy and assurance and confidence. Remember and believe. God is getting ready to redeem his people. He's coming and he is coming for you. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until his second coming. Amen. We continue with the singing of our prayer hymn number 941. We praise you and acknowledge you, O God.